I would uh, call it a baby business only. No parent should feel that they have to give up their child simply because they're poor. We're on our way to a small village in India. Here we meet Ramesh Kulkarni. A few years ago he was the head of a family with a wife and children. Today he's lost everything. Ramesh Kulkarni's wife is dead and their children are missing. The trail of the children leads all the way to Europe. And more specifically to Denmark. In March 2002, tragedy suddenly struck the family. Ramesh Kulkarni's wife died of jaundice only a few months after the birth of their youngest child. As the weeks went by, Ramesh Kulkarni's situation grew more and more desperate. He quit his job and took the children to close relatives. But the family is poor and couldn't provide for Ramesh Kulkarni and his children. A friend suggested to the despairing father that he put his children into a children's home just for the time being. Soon after, two representatives from Preet Mandir, an organization in the city of Pune, came to pick up the children. They assured Ramesh Kulkarni that he could visit his children as often as he liked and that he could have them back at any time. Ramesh Kulkarni decided to send the children away until his finances had improved. But this decision was to prove disastrous to the family. According to the Times of India, the USA, Italy, Spain and Denmark receive the highest number of adopted children from India. But many other Western countries also adopt children from India. Since 2001, more than 6,000 Indian children have been adopted by foreign families. Reduced fertility rates worldwide mean that competition for children for adoption is growing. I think many families are looking for young children to adopt. And in many Western countries, there are fewer and fewer children available for adoption. So those who are looking uh, for young children seek to adopt abroad. Rumors abound of a cynical adoption market where children form a valuable commodity and huge sums of money change hands. Stories of corruption, blackmail and the sale of children appear on the international adoption market. A market where the only two Danish adoption agencies, Danadopt and AC International Child Support, also operate. Det er blevet meget, meget trendy igennem de sidste 5-10 år at gøre det for hele den vestlige verden. Så Hele Europa adopterer rigtig mange børn i dag, og USA gør det også. Og det har betydet i de lande, som, som giver børn til adoption til andre lande, at der er presset blevet større, og det mærker vi også i Indien. According to UNICEF, this kind of pressure is a major problem. Unfortunately, what sometimes happens is that because there's so much interest in adopting usually young children and there aren't so many young children who are truly abandoned available uh, you end up with a pressure to find children available for families instead of families for children and that's where the problem of the business begins. To penetrate the adoption industry facade we pretend we're starting up a new adoption agency. Through our fictitious agency, the Danish Adoption Service, we'll try to uncover the deals struck between children's homes and organizations in India and the international adoption agencies. 
We want to find out the role money plays when it comes to agreements on adopting children. I'm calling from Denmark. We call Priya Dashani, a home in Pune, a well-established place from which the Danish AC International Child Support and several other foreign adoption agencies have been sourcing children for years. We are looking for, for new partners in different countries and we heard about your agency that it should be a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are interested. The home is interested in working with us. They'd like to meet us. We ask what we should do about funds. Uh, when uh, you meet uh, with Mr. Kumar, yes. then we decide. Huh? Mr. Kumar is the owner and director of the home. We arrange to meet him a few weeks later in India. Ramesh Kulkarni will never forget the day he sent his children away to the home. The representatives from Preet Mandir said they'd take good care of the children and make sure they went to school. Before they drove off with the children, they asked Ramesh Kulkarni to sign a document. According to Ramesh Kulkarni, the document was in English. The representatives told him it was the admission papers for the home and the school. Ramesh Kulkarni doesn't understand English, but he signed the document anyway. <laughs> According to UNICEF, a child can only be given up for adoption if certain conditions are met. The child should have been um, either truly have lost both parents, which is actually quite uncommon, uh, or if the child has been relinquished by, uh, by their birth parent, that that parent has been counseled. That parent should really understand what adoption means, because this is one of the problems. Quite often when children are, um, are put in, uh, in a home for some period, it's because of poverty. By then, Preet Mandir, where Ramesh Kulkarni's children were sent, and its director, Mr. Bassin, had been subject to charges of blackmail and corruption for several years. Mr. Basin of uh, Preet Mandir is a very smart guy. Once even when I had visited the institution, he tried to um, give me money, offer me money, which I refused. Devayani Tuma knows all about the charges levelled at Preet Mandir. She's a member of the Child Welfare Committee in the area where the father lives and she knows how the home operates. They are not following the proper procedures and rather he's selling babies, you know, especially for foreign adoption. Even in 2000, serious accusations against the institution and its director, Mr. Bassin, were flooding in. They get from all other uh, institutions from all over Maharashtra. They're literally, their social workers are hunting out for babies. The list of complaints from foreign adoptive parents and adoption agencies is long. According to the documents in our possession, at a meeting between the Indian Adoption Authorities, CARA, and representatives of the foreign adoption agencies, Preet Mandir was accused of a large number of illegal acts. It emerged that the director of Preet Mandir, Mr. Bassin, systematically demanded between 5,000 and 15,000 US dollars for each child adopted, huge sums of money in India and apparently adoptions are an unusually good business for the home. I would uh, call it a baby business only, baby selling. The international adoption agencies also complain about the fact that many children are ill and malnourished and that the mortality rate at the home is very high. The director, Mr. Bassin, is threatening and abusive towards the foreign adoption agencies and parents are being pushed into paying extra sums when they come to pick up their children. Preet Mandir works with a large number of foreign adoption agencies. Its director, Mr. Bassin, says he works with 45 international agencies. 
Until 2003, the Danish agency AC International Child Support was one of them, and 26 children have come to Denmark from Preet Mandir. But not everybody has wanted to work with this Indian institution. Already in 2000, after a visit to Preet Mandir, the Swedish adoption agency, Adoption Centrum, decided they did not want to work with the home. We were quite shocked. We thought that the children took not very well hand. Barnen hade det ganska miserabelt. Eh, ja, ungefär det sämsta barnhem som jag hade sett i Indien. Monica Lind, head of Adoption Centrum's India program, was so shocked by the conditions at Preet Mandir that she decided to send a written complaint about the home to Cara, the Indian adoption authorities. Hvis man kom som adoptionsförmedlare på det tidspunkt i år 2000, kunde man så undgå att se att barnen inte hade det gott? Jag tycker inte det. But Danish AC International Child Support chose to continue to work with the home until the summer of 2003, even though the accusations levelled against Preet Mandir were well known in the international adoption world. Giver det der slet ikke stof til eftertanke, at I ikke opdagede de ting? Altså, man kan jo ikke opdage ting, før man opdager dem. Og jeg har ikke opdaget noget konkret. Det har ikke været holdt hemmeligt. Nej, det har ikke gået holdt hemmeligt, for du har jo pressen også. Og alle i Indien har kendt til det. Alla är ju upprörda. Alla pratar mycket om det här. The Indian authorities took steps against Preet Mandir on several occasions, suspending the institution's license for both in-country and inter-country adoptions. But the director of the institution got his license back again every time. Det kan virka märkligt på mig att de indiska myndigheter bara ger ham licensen tillbaka. Jag håller helt och hållet med. Men hur kan det ske? Det får du fråga dem om. Men det virker mærkeligt. Ja. Er det den måde, de arbejder på? Ja, man kan undre. I alle fall er det så der. Devayani Tuma, a member of the Child Welfare Committee, has no doubt why Preet Mandir keeps getting its license for adoptions back, despite the continuous stream of accusations. When we can get hold of these things, why can't Kara get hold of them? Tell me. So it's that if Kara very well knows about these higher authorities also very well know about what is happening is they're just hiding them this now. Yeah, they're, they're supportive of all this. Devayani Tuma explains how she thinks adoption documents are being falsified by the institutions, apparently with the full knowledge of the authorities. This is a destitute declaration uh, document, certificate, which has to be issued in regard to abandoned children before they are given away in adoption. That's, you know, they are free for adoption, declaring them then they are free for adoption. So in this document, uh, the dates have been misappropriated. Like the child has been found in the month of October. And before that they say that in July, the paper publication has been done. The photo has to be published in the papers. So before the child has come into the institution or before the child is born only they say here that the paper publication has been done. And before that in the month of June the police station report has come saying that nobody has come to claim the child. This has been typed by the institution, El Preet Mandir, but it has to be signed by the CWC members and all three members have signed. Three members have signed, haven't they noticed these dates? mistake in the dates, I mean to say. This shows how carelessly the CWC is functioning. In April 2007, Preet Mandir had its adoption license suspended yet again, and a police investigation into the home was launched. This is very tragic. Indian children adopted from Preet Mandir are now living in many Western countries, including Denmark. The question is whether all these children were adopted in accordance with the law. Ramesh Kulkarni's in-laws, the child's grandparents, live in a small village about an hour from the father. Before the mother's death, they were very close to their grandchildren. <laughs> Mm. 
Not until a month after the children had been sent away did the grandparents find out that their grandchildren were staying at the home. They and Ramesh Kulkarni went to Preet Mandir, Pune, to get the children back. They cannot demand money and tell them that you give us money, then only we'll give you your children. They have no right to say that. Neither Ramesh Kulkarni nor the grandparents had enough money to buy the children back. The family had to leave Preet Mandir without them. They have cheated the family who was not aware of the laws. Yeah, they didn't explain to them the proper procedure. So it's called cheating. Na? Preet Mandir has committed a crime of cheating with the family. Hello. In the same city as scandal-riven Preet Mandir, we also find Priya Darshani, another children's home. This is the place we arranged a meeting with a few weeks earlier. We pretend to be a new adoption agency, the Danish Adoption Service, on the lookout for new partners on the Indian adoption market. To enable us to video behind closed doors of the home, we used concealed cameras. She wants to see them. Yes, we would like to see them. About 50 children are living at this home. We were told that half of the children are adopted by foreign adoptive parents every year. These children, they're two, four, six, eight. Are they, uh, are they sort of ready for adoption? Some are ready, some are in the process. We've arranged a meeting with the head of the home, Mr. Kumar. But the staff now tell us that he doesn't want to meet us here. We're given his phone number so we can set up a meeting later that day. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Take care of the children. We're coming back maybe one day. Thank you very much for the visit. Back at the hotel, we call Mr. Kumar. Hello. Yes, hello. Hello. Is it Mr. Kumar? Yes. This, I know who's calling. Yeah, this is John Larson from Danish Adoption. Mr. Kumar knows that we're in town and would like to have a business meeting with us. We'll be down at at six o'clock in the at the reception. At the reception? Yes. Yes, yes, sir. Should we say that? Uh, yeah, yeah, I will be there. Tension was growing between Ramesh Kulkarni and the home. When he went to visit his children in spring 2003, he received an astonishing piece of news. The home now said it was thinking of putting the children up for adoption. Ramesh Kulkarni was ejected from the home. What he didn't know was that at that moment his children were already in Denmark. We'll return to Maharashtra and Ramesh Kulkarni's story shortly. Firstly, we'll focus on Andhra Pradesh, East India. This state has years of experience of the serious problems afflicting the adoption market. One afternoon seven years ago, this girl was kidnapped in the street. Savi Begum was described in newspapers and on posters, but the seven-year-old girl was nowhere to be found. 
उसके बाद हर जगह ढूंढे तीन चार महीने ढूंढे बाने वहाँ से बच्चे इंडिया से बहुत जा रहे बल्कि मालूम हाँ and rumors that children were being sent abroad proved to be true. Savi Begum was finally located at the John Abraham Bethany Memorial Home when the Indian authorities raided the institution nine months later. Savi Begum has now been given a new identity. Her new name is Rina. The day after she was found, she was due to be adopted by a family abroad, according to the Indian authorities. अभी हम लोग पूरे बैठे हुए रहते ना दोपहर के टाइम तो बोल लेते हैं अच्छा हुआ मिल गई अपने किस्मत में थी बच्ची मिल गई ऐसी पूरे फैमिली में बैठे हुए रहते पूरे बोलते हैं अगर बाहर चले गए तो कितनी मुश्किल होती थी Following the raid on the Bethany home the institution was charged with systematically buying and kidnapping children for the purpose of selling them for intercountry adoption The owner of the Bethany home Savitri Sampson was sent to prison and the police launched a large scale investigation by the time of the adoption scandal, agencies from many Western countries had been sourcing children for adoption from the Bethany home for years. One such agency was the AC International Child Support from Denmark. Nine families were on the waiting list and ready to adopt a child from there, and 44 children had already come to Denmark from this home. But then, what did Bernie do with them? Again, they were. Det var som det indiske børnehjem er flest. Altså, vi havde ingen grund, de var havde fuld licens og lov til at arbejde med det arbejde, de gjorde, og vi havde ingen grund til at mistænke dem overhovedet for noget. The police charge sheet mentions three countries, the USA, Denmark and Canada, as the closest partners of the institution. She gave children for intercountry adoptions through one, Adoption Service Information Agency USA, two, Adoption Center Denmark, and three Infants du Monde Canada placement agencies by accepting huge amounts. The charge sheet describes many years of child abuse and the cynical sale of children. We've come to see what's left of the home. Hello? By chance, its former owner, Savitri Sampson, is in. Hello? Astonishingly, she invites us inside. We can't reveal that we're journalists, but even though we don't tell her who we are and haven't even mentioned the many charges against her, she immediately starts to defend herself. 30 years service I did and I, I was running orphan children. I brought up the 900 children education and 1994 I got license for adoption and I gave the children for adoption. So many children went. I didn't do any hangy-pangy. Savitri Sampson denies that she has done anything wrong. She points out that the case is still proceeding through the Indian courts. But the police charge sheet tells a totally different story. The accused, A1 to A10, entered into criminal conspiracy, i.e. an agreement to do an illegal act of giving adoption of children overseas and in India for monetary consideration and for making easy money. The body of an infant was buried on the 21st of April 2001 in the compound of Bethany Home. A1, along with the other accused, fabricated and forged relinquishment deeds in the names of pseudonymous biological parents. Even the high rate of mortality of the children, i.e. 24 deaths between 1998 and 2001, clearly shows the gross negligence on the part of the management. Da de rensede børn i hjemmet, der fandt de børn, der var lå i deres eget tisse afføring. Ja, det har jeg aldrig. Jeg har været der et par gange. Det har jeg aldrig set. Men de vidste selvfølgelig også, at vi kom på besøg. Hvis, altså, jeg ved jo godt, når jeg tager rundt og ser på børn i hjemmet, at, at jeg ser børn i hjemmet fra deres bedste side, fordi vi kommer jo aldrig uanmeldt. After the raid at the Bethany home and a number of other homes in 2001, Andhra Pradesh stopped all intercountry adoptions. This woman was then a member of a civil rights committee. She took part in the investigations which led to the authorities taking action against the institutions. The worst one is Bethany Home uh, because uh, 
the children were uh, um, put in a very very bad condition they were on the uh, floor and uh, they were uh, with the diarrhea they were suffering with tb they were suffering with hiv aids there, there were a lot of uh, diseases there. Savvy and the other 60 children from the Bethany home were rescued from captivity on April the 21st, 2001. According to the charge sheet, when the authorities raided the home, the children were lying in their own urine and excrement. Many of the children were ill and a dead child had been buried in the garden. Savvy's mother will never forget the day she was reunited with her daughter. <coughs> You know, क्या बोलते मैडम कुछ नहीं बोले लोग इनकी हालत तो पूरी ऐसी हो गई थी ये पूरे वैसे मोटे-मोटे कल्ले हो गए थे ये हिस्सा पूरा ऐसा मोटा-मोटा होगा था और जो अब हम हिंदी बात कर रहे वो भी हिंदी बात भी नहीं कर रहे थे पूरी तेलुगु नाम रीना था उनका Savvy Begum's family says she's still very much affected by her time at the institution and that she doesn't remember much about it एक होम लोग उनसे शुरू शुरू पूछते हैं भूल गए हो ना एक होम था गते इतनी गंदगी थी होम में रोज दाल खाना देता था गते उन्हें रोज तो ऐसा लंबे लंबे शेखा थे बच्चे बाहर नहीं निकल सकते थे गते उन्हें बोलते थे आके तो डेली पानी नहीं हिलाते थे पूरा गंदा 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 होगा था Everybody knows uh, who, who they can uh, sell the babies very few number, but they are buying a lot of uh, number of babies. So whatever uh, baby who can sustain well and who is very nice, those babies can go out and the uh, rest of the babies if they die also it's okay. Uh, they are like uh, ve just vegetables, uh, if the vegetable is very good we cook and eat and if the vegetable is bad we put them in uh, bin. So it, just they treated them like that. After the raid on the Bethany home in 2001, not all the children were reunited with their biological families like Savi Begum. Monica Reddy was among the 60 children found at the home. Like the other children, she was initially placed in a government children's home while the authorities tried to locate her biological family. But the family was never found. Instead, the authorities found an Indian family who'd like to adopt her. How has it been to get her? Well, it was very nice. <laughs> it's a very nice experience. My name is Monica. Like millions of families around the world, Suda Reddy and her husband are the victims of low fertility. They've been trying to have a baby for years. We were quite sad. But we didn't want to go through that uh, medical uh, procedures. It's slightly hectic. It takes a lot of time, long time, long wait. And I was not really prepared to do all that. The family decided to adopt. But like many other Indian middle class families, Suda Reddy and her husband were forced to join the long line of Indian families waiting to do just that. There's a lot of people waiting here also lot of people. There's a long list. Um, they have to wait at least, the minimum period we have to wait is two years or uh, two, er, two and a half years. I och med att det är brist på möjliga barn att adoptera, så även indierna börjar öppna sig lite grann. Så även eh, barn i två, tre års ålder kan hitta indiska föräldrar och um, flickor och även lite mörkare barn nu för tiden. Så det sker en förändring i Indien. Och det är klart att det blir då på bekostnad av oss utlänningar. För då blir vi inte lika aktuella. According to the Hague Convention, which lays down the international rules for intercountry adoptions, one of the prime objectives is to find an adoptive family for the child in the child's own country. Yet many Indian families have to wait for years to adopt while they watch families from foreign countries adopting Indian children. Many critics say this is because privately owned Indian institutions make a lot more money out of inter-country adoptions and so choose to send the children abroad. When the whole thing is opened up, so many Indian parents came out, we need babies, we want babies, this government is not giving us babies, these adoption agencies are not giving us babies, they are throwing us out. 
uh, they are making us so many visits to their uh, places, but later they are telling you are not rich, you are not that, you are not this. And finally, they are giving away the babies to the foreign uh, option. We will also provide her the best education, the best uh, family environment, the best um, extracurricular activities because uh, she learns painting, she goes for her music class, she learns uh, dancing. So we give her all uh, facilities. And I think if, she, if ever she wants to go abroad for studying, or whatever, we are ready to do that also. She's my brother. And perhaps this family was just lucky. When Monica Reddy was found at the Bethany home, the authorities told her new family that she was due to be adopted by a family in a foreign country. That's one of the few things the family knows about her background. Your father? No, my father, grandfather. Grandfather? When we asked for the details, they said she's an NOC child and she was to go to Canada or someplace. Canada or US, one of these two countries. It's a Back at the Bethany home, Savitri Sampson shows us some confidential adoption documents concerning the children she sent abroad for inter-country adoption. The documents contain personal information about some of the foreign families who obtained children from this home. Adoption Center in Denmark. Is that the name? Yeah. And for how long have you worked with them? Ten years we worked. Ten years I worked. Yes. Hvad har I gjort for at undersøge de børn, der er kommet fra Bethany Home til Danmark? For at undersøge, at de ikke kommer hertil på ulovlig vis? Vi har ikke gjort noget, fordi de indiske myndigheder har jo masser af muligheder for at både at indkalde os som vidner og for at få de oplysninger, de vil have igennem os. Det kan de få når som helst, og vi har ikke fået nogen henvendelser. Og I har ikke fundet anledning til at begynde at undersøge det her? Undersøge? om børnene er kommet til Danmark på, på lovlig vis? Nej, det vil ikke få nogen anledning til. All adoption agencies are doing business. Nothing more than that. Whether it is Denmark agency or American agency or Indian agency. They are doing business, business, business. दो साल तक तो एक ही नहीं था उन्हें मिलते बल्कि टू इयर्स का तो एक ही नहीं था इसको कहीं नहीं भेजते हम लोग उसे फंक्शन में लेके जाते In spring 2003, Ramesh Kulkarni still believed that his children were at Preet Mandir. But in fact, the children were getting used to their new parents, a new language and a whole new life in Denmark. But Ramesh Kulkarni didn't know his children had gone. How could he? Because now the institution started to push him to give up the children for adoption. But he refused to give up his children. The people at Preet Mandir were furious and banned him from the premises. Ramesh Kulkarni was ejected again and told not to come back. He was afraid they'd call the police. Our fictitious agency, the Danish Adoption Service, has finally set up a meeting with Mr. Kumar, the director of Priya Dashani. Hello, how are you? Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you, finally. A home several Western adoption agencies work with. We've uh, booked a room up here. We are carrying a hidden camera to reveal what happens when adoption industry business partners meet to trade in children and to find out the deals being cut between Priya Dashani and foreign adoption agencies. It's in here. Yeah, exactly. We ask the director of the institution how many children he can provide. We also tell him that it's important that we can trust him. We'll try to 10 to 15 children first. At first year. Is it possible? Yeah. We ask Mr. Kumar if we can sign a contract with him. Nobody can doing 
uh, on paper any contract okay it is the let's go to the first the trust with each other so Mr. Kumar is saying that he can provide 10 to 15 children in the first year, a number he soon reduces to four or five if we want to be sure of obtaining them. So, first year you will get up to five children, you will get it easy. Mr. Kumar wants to make an agreement with us for five children the first year, even though the Indian adoption authorities clearly do not allow agreements specifying a number of children. He also tells us that he can help us to get the necessary Indian adoption license through his good contacts in CARA. Uh, for CARA license, I will support you. Okay. And how can you do that? Yes, I have uh, I have some contact in Delhi. At CARA? Can you help it out? Yeah. Okay. It could, be, it could help us a lot. Yeah, yeah, of course. Once CARA given clearance, then there is no problem. It will grow very smoothly in adoption process to complete. At that time, we have to pay. Following the threats made by Preet Mandir, Ramesh Kulkarni was too afraid to go there to visit the children. He contacted the local police and a lawyer. But the police took no action and the lawyer was much too expensive. Ramesh Kulkarni began to feel completely helpless and he began to lose any hope of ever getting his children back. He regularly called the institution which told him that his children were fine. Not until October 2006 did Ramesh Kulkarni and his brother try to visit the children at Preet Mandir again. To their surprise, they were now allowed to see them. Ramesh Kulkarni didn't know that by now his children had been living in Denmark for three years. The home showed him some other children entirely, claiming that they were his. When the father and his brother protested, they were rejected, a now all too familiar procedure at the home. In April 2007, the whole family decided to drive to the home together. Ramesh Kulkarni, his brother and in-laws were determined to confront Preet Mandir once and for all. But now they were told the shocking news. His children were in Denmark. It's not the first time that UNICEF has heard of cases like Ramesh Kulkarni's. Cases where children's homes and middlemen trick poor parents into giving up their children seem to be a worldwide risk where inter-country adoptions are concerned. My reaction is that it's all too common uh, and it happens everywhere. We've heard cases like this um, from, um, from Africa, from Latin America, from, from Asia. Um, and this is, you know, we can see here all of the things which, which can go wrong. First, and I, I haven't had a chance to say this, but no parent should feel that they have to give up their child simply because they're poor. But despite Mr. Roundskull's many years of experience on the international adoption market, he says he's never heard of cases like this before. I have to say that in a case that you describe here, I have never been out for before. And it's so terrible if it's true. The family now complained to Childline, the children's rights organization, to the police in Pune, and to the Criminal Bureau of Investigation in the city of Mumbai. The whole family backed Ramesh Kulkarni. Their aim was clear, they wanted the children back. <laughs> It has to be very clear, and as the Hague Convention says, that person understands what it is that, um, that they're doing. If he signs something terminating his parental rights, but it was not in the language that he understood, it's probably not even legally binding. At our meeting with Mr. Kumar, the talk quickly turns to money. We ask him how much he normally charges for a child. Normally in India, uh, 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 foreign agency, and they pay 
सिक्स टू सेवन डॉलर सिक्स टू सेवन थाउजेंड डॉलर पर पर चाइल्ड The Indian adoption authorities say that the maximum amount an institution is allowed to charge in relation to an adoption is three thousand five hundred U.S. dollars. This amount is to cover all expenses in relation to the adoption, as well as the child's board at the institution. But Mr. Kumar seems to have his own price list. U.S. agents pay more more than seven thousand dollars. They pay eight thousand, nine thousand. Eight thousand, nine thousand. Yeah. Monica Lind thinks it's a major problem for adoptive parents to mix money and adoptions. Man måste kunna se sitt barn i ögonen när det växer upp sedan och säga att jag har inte betalat någonting för dig utan jag betalar för kostnaderna som som var förknippade med adoptionen. Men du har inte kostat någonting. When it comes to adoptions, this particular problem is also very important to UNICEF. What is important is to ensure that those who are um, finding children for adoption are not able to generate a profit in that process. Um, and of course, I think what would be obvious to any parent, any adoptive parent or any, any other parent, is that no one would want to see that a child was paid for. Priya Dashani says it puts about 25 children a year up for inter-country adoption to the USA. So Mr. Kumar is making at least $200,000 a year from adoptions to the US alone. Han har väl lite kostnader också kan man utgå ifrån. Men ändå så är det ju astronomiska belopp i Indien om du tänker vad en lön är. Hur kan man som adoptionsförmedlare gebärt sig på ett marked hvor hvor det handlar om business? Där borde väl inte vara pengar i det här. Uh, nah, de er der jo altså. The Danish director Mr. Rounsko doesn't mind telling us about his work with Mr. Kumar, but during the interview he can't remember how many children the AC International Child Support has received from the home. Hvor mange børn har I hentet fra Bredasini? Det kan jeg ikke huske, men det kan jeg undersøge. Another thing he can't remember is how much AC International Child Support pays per child. When AC paid at that time, they worked with, with you? Yeah. And did they pay six thousand uh, five hundred? Yeah, six thousand five hundred. They pay for agency. That's how you tell it, sir. But do you again go there and check? But two days after our interview, AC International Child Support tells us that they don't want to share the information with us. Later, we find out that the Danish adoption agency has obtained 23 children from Priya Dashani. What if man today paid $6,500 for a child? So there's something wrong. And it's unlawful. If we should work with you, then one children or one child, how much would that be? It can start from seven thousand. It would be possible to to make an arrangement with at least up to five children yeah. the first year. Yeah. And it would be seven thousand per child the first year. Yeah. Det är upp upprörande. Jag blir väldigt ledsen och upprörd över detta. Och jag önskar att du skulle ta kontakt med Kara och informera dem om detta. Varför? Därför att det är inte så det ska fungera. Yeah. Mr. Kumar says he knows about Kara's $3,500 limit, but he still offers to help us to break the rules that's, that's so that he can charge twice the permitted amount. If uh, Kara only allows uh, the payment of uh, $3,500, how do they then stop us if we pay you $7,000? Do they so, say to us that we're not allowed to? So, or should we not tell them? I'd say. No, no. We'll see how we can arrange. That is no problem. How we'll see when so our understanding will build, and we'll we'll start actually practical work. 
then we will arrange. So it's not going to be a problem? No, 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 no problem. And don't bother about that. Finally, we ask Mr. Kumar if we can request specific appearances as an extra service, such as light or dark skin. If some of our uh, parents at home in Denmark prefer, you know, certain things, yeah. is it then possible to ask for that? Yeah, yeah. It is. Yes, yes, they can ask. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes. What we now know is that several Western adoption agencies are working with a home that's willing to break the rules quite blatantly. We also know that a number of international adoption agencies, including Danish AC International Child Support, have worked with some of the most scandal-riven homes in India. Since 2001, more than 6,000 Indian children have been adopted by foreign families around the world. Hundreds of these children have come from corrupt institutions. The Danish manager, Mr. Raunskoll, cannot guarantee that the children who came to Denmark from these institutions were adopted legally. We can try to make a guarantee, 100% guarantee for something else. That doesn't work. I don't think there are many people who do in our society. But I think it's very problematic that you can't guarantee something when it comes to adopting children to Denmark. Men sådan er livet nu engang. Altså kriminelle elementer, hvis det er det, der er foregået, det kan man altså ikke være imod. The Danish Adoption Agency cannot guarantee that the children adopted from India were not the victims of child trading or kidnapping. And many hundreds of adoptive parents in Denmark have never been informed of this very real risk. Det er ikke en del af den almindelige information. Hvorfor er det ikke det? Når du er fuldt ud bekendt med, hvordan det foregår? Jamen, vi har ingen grund til at tro, at der nogensinde er formidlet børn til Danmark uretmæssigt. Men I har heller ikke nogen grund til at tro det andet. Det modsatte. Men, men er man ikke nødt til at opdage noget ulovligt og nogle uregelmæssigheder, før man ligesom kan begynde at inddrage det i sine indsrævler, i sine Jamen, man kunne jo også sige, at I har fået... Rigtig mange vink med en vognstang om adoptionsmarkedet i Indien. Ja, altså vi har været, været ude for to, øh, for to tilfælde, hvor, 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 hvor de samarbejdspartners øh, licens er blevet taget, som vi har haft. Og det er, det er meget, meget, meget beklageligt. The manager admits that it may be difficult to continue working in India. Trækker I helt ud af Indien? Ja, det kan det nemt ind med. Hvorfor? Ja, fordi det er, for, øh, det, er for, det er for uoverskueligt, og det er for rådet. After six years, Ramesh Kulkarni and his family finally know the truth about his children. They don't know much about his children's lives, only that they're living with an adoptive family in Denmark. कि आमी संभाल तैयार है एकड़ आम चम्मच मुलाकात होंगे मेहता तब वाट बाहर लास्ट बोलना